Okay, let's keep chucking along with this first example. This, I think, is officially part four. And we're just going to get a little bit more specific. This one, hopefully, would be pretty short. Okay, so now we're going to learn how to find those coefficients C sub n for a particular boundary condition. All right, let's start back at the beginning again and see where we're at. Okay, we had this particular charge configuration over here. That gave us this set of boundary conditions. Our general solution at the beginning of the last lecture satisfied three out of four. Then in the last lecture, we used Fourier series and Fourier trick to figure out how to satisfy this last boundary condition. Okay, so now we have a solution that satisfies all of the boundary conditions. It is uh, gonna be a sum of a bunch of sine series, and we learned that you can construct any function you want out of uh, sine series, which is what allows us to actually do this, because that way we can satisfy, uh, let's go back all the way to here, right? We can satisfy our boundary condition at, here we go, we can satisfy our boundary condition at the x equals zero plate, which needs to be equal to this voltage by taking a sum of sine functions. So no matter what this function is, a sum of sine functions will be able to recreate it. Okay, so based on that, we end up finding out that our solution is going to be a sum of a bunch of different terms, okay, where each term is going to be multiplied by a particular coefficient. The value of that coefficient is going to depend on what we, whoops, that should be a not that was probably a mistake in the earlier lecture if you want to go back and fix it I definitely copied and pasted that okay so the value of these C sub n's is going to depend on the value of what our voltage is at the hot plate okay and we're going to figure it out by using Fourier's trick which is doing this integral okay so let's do this for a simple case that we can easily do by hand uh, just to show you how this will work okay so we're going to do one analytical example here okay and this is kind of an example that you could easily do by hand you wouldn't need a computer or mathematica but let's just go with the simplest case that's not that that hot plate is powered at zero let's let it have a potential of uh, v naught so a constant potential across the plate in that case uh, I can calculate those coefficients again with this same integral. But now our V naught is just going to be a constant. And I, because of that, I can pull V naught out. And then I just have to take uh, the integral of the sine function. That's going to give me... this guy here and that's going to be evaluated from a to zero okay so when i do that i'll end up getting negative two v naught divided by pi times the cosine of n pi minus one Okay, so let's go ahead and evaluate. Oh, I forgot an end here. Let's go ahead and evaluate this for different ends. Let's see if we can figure out a pattern. Uh, C sub one, this is gonna be N equals one. So C sub one is gonna be equal to negative two V naught divided by one times pi times the cosine of pi minus one. Okay, this is negative one, so that's gonna give me negative two V naught divided by pi times negative two or four V naught over pi. Okay, for N equals two, uh, I'm gonna get negative two V naught uh, two down here and a pi that's gonna be multiplied by the cosine of two pi minus one. 
2 pi, that's 1, so this is going to give me 0, okay? And I could keep doing this, but I'll just show you the general case. Uh, in general, uh, for C, N, uh, where N is odd, you get uh, that you're going to end up getting 4 V naught over N pi, uh, and for values of N that are even, you will end up getting zero. Cool. We're getting there. Now we can write out a solution. Finally, okay, a solution for our boundary condition just being a constant V naught, okay? And that solution is going to look like this. And might as well just skip uh, the even terms since they're going to be equal to zero. Okay. You're going to get four, whoops, that C sub n, which is equal to four V naught over uh, pi times one over n. Okay. And that's e to the negative uh, n pi over a times x times the sine of n pi over a times y, okay? And it's worth noting here, an infinite number of terms will give you the exact solution, but many terms will give you a good enough solution, okay? And so to go ahead and prove that to you, I'm going to switch over again to Mathematica, I wrote up a little notebook to look at this problem in particular. Okay. This particular problem, again, I just wrote a little bit of code to go with it. I've defined the potential as 10, just picking something random. I defined A as 1, doesn't really matter. And here I'm integrating to find those constants, C sub n. Uh, and I'm just using Mathematica to do the integral, even though, as I showed, you could easily do this one by hand. Okay, but I'm taking 2 divided by A times the integral of our V naught times sine of n pi divided by A times Y. And I'm doing it in between the plates, okay? Um, this is a general uh, solution to our integral for a particular n, uh, but I can go ahead and list out what you get uh, in a table form here where I'm evaluating this c sub n for n equals 1 to 10. So you can see indeed for the, uh, let me, I can make this even nicer. I'm going to do n. Okay, here you can see the term. So when n is 1, you get what we uh, got before. And for all the even terms, it's 0. Okay, and it goes on and on and on. Okay, so down here, whoop, whoop, whoop. okay, so down here I've defined a just a temporary variable that is the function for each term in my solution, but I'm multiplying it by the coefficient that I solve for up here, okay, by doing the integration. Uh, this is a general form for the solution, so I still have to put in what the n value is into Mathematica, and it will evaluate, evaluate what that term looks like, okay? But that's what I'm doing in this next set. So this next set, I'm actually just plugging in the different n values, the ones that don't, just the odd ones since the even terms are zero, and that's giving me each term in my solution to the potential, so it's not the total potential, it's just each term, but I thought it'd be interesting to look at each term separately. So I'm plotting out what the function looks like, or I'm printing out what the function looks like, and then I'm plotting the solution. So let's take a look at that. Okay, here this is our first term in our solution for the potential for this problem. Here you can see, um, it might even be helpful to kind of rotate it this way. Okay, and you could think about x being as out of the figure here in terms of space. But y is in this direction here, and I'm just going from, uh, or sorry, x is in from left to right here, and I'm just going from x equals 0 to 1, okay? And then y is in uh, the other direction, okay? So this would be uh, y equals 0 here, and up here this would be y equals a. So if I'm thinking about the how I compare this to my original situation, uh, one of the grounded plates is along this plane here, the other one would be along that plane here. My hot plate would be over here on the left-hand side. 
Okay, so the first term that makes up my total solution, I'm going to add a bunch together, uh, looks pretty simple. Okay, on the left-hand side, it looks kind of like a sine function. I mean, it is a sine function. That's what we get here. But as I get further and further away from that hot plate, uh, the potential decreases exponentially uh, down to a zero value. Okay, so again, just like we talked about last week, it's a nice smooth solution. Each one of these terms is a solution to Laplace's equation. So they each follow the, the rules of the general solution. They have to be smooth, no maxes or mins. Okay, so that's what the first term looks like. Uh, the second term, each term is going to be a little bit more complicated. Okay, but you can actually also see that the magnitude of each term is going to be a little bit smaller. So the highest voltage here uh, is around 10. The highest voltage here uh, is only from 4 to negative 4. Okay, but we get a little bit more complicated at our hot plate boundary here. Again, this is the hot plate. This uh, this surface here would be one of the grounded plates. The other one would be another grounded plate. We still get a smooth solution. It still goes exponentially decreases as x gets bigger, okay, just like our boundary condition specified. All right, and the next term, again, the magnitude of it is smaller, but it is more complex. And then we'll look at, uh, nope, that one didn't seem to work out. Let's see what I do. Oh, here, oops. Okay, let's look at one more term. Okay, again, following the same pattern, even more complicated. All right, but let's see what happens when we add them together. Okay, so the true potential is the sum of a bunch of these images that I just showed you, okay? So that's what I'm doing here. I'm calculating, uh, a sum of a bunch of terms. Okay, and then here I'm plotting that sum. I can start with a reasonable number of terms just so I can print them all out for you. Okay, so here you can see this is the first 25 terms. I haven't bothered to skip, by the way, uh, the even ones because they're just zero. So when you add them together, they're going to go away. So you don't see 25 terms here. You're seeing half of that because half of the terms ended up being zero. Okay, but you can see just like we did before, this is the first plot I showed you. This is the second one, third one, and the fourth one. But now I'm adding more to that. If we wanted to, I could just go... Uh, to those just to make it more interesting. Okay, and let's go ahead and uh, plot the sum. And you can see the sum is looking closer to what you might expect if this hot plate had a potential uh, or a voltage of 10, then you'd expect the voltage to be 10 at this side of our solution. And then as you get further away from that hot plate, the potential would go to zero. You can see that it does that. You can see that with the limited number of terms that I have added together, this behavior is not uh, what you'd expect. You wouldn't expect the potential value at this left-hand side to have this waviness to it. Okay, and that's because I haven't added very many terms. So I can go ahead and add uh, more terms. So let's go up to 100. That one I don't want to follow this up. Okay. You can see with 100 terms, it gets a lot smoother. Okay, 500. Okay, really a lot smoother. Now we're looking really good. Might as well go up to 1,000 just for fun. It's going to take a little longer. And now, yeah, look at that. I mean, that's not exactly the right solution, but it's really close, okay? Maybe close enough for whatever you're trying to do with this particular system. So we've added 1,000 terms in our solution, each one of those terms looks something like this, okay? Each one of those terms satisfies Laplace's equation. So the sum of them also satisfies Laplace's equation. And when I sum them all together, I can get the solution to the particular boundary conditions that I specified for this problem, okay? If I wanted to, I can also look at the values at a particular uh, y, Okay, so this is just making a one-dimensional plot. I'm fixing the y value, so that essentially means in that original picture, we're getting either closer to one of uh, the plates that's at a 
zero voltage or at the other one. So either the plate at zero, Y equals zero, or the plate at Y equals A. So if I'm pretty close here to, the, to Y equals zero, which is close to that grounded plate, you can see the voltage drops off a lot faster with uh, X than if I was right in the middle of the plates. So I put the, the, the distance between the plates to be one. In the middle, you can see it drops off more slowly because I'm further away from those grounded plates. And you can also see that behavior here. Um, on the edges here, you can see this contour drops off much more quickly uh, than it does right in the middle. Okay, hopefully you guys can see that. 